This is the story of Lamia Flight 2933. On the 20th of November 2016, an Avro RJ-85 was on the ground at Viru Viru International Airport in Bolivia. This was a charter flight and this plane would take the 22 players of the Chapacoense football team all the way from Viru Viru to Rio Negro in Colombia. But that wasn't the original plan. The original plan called for two charter flights from Guadalajaros to Medellin and then from Medellin to Chapeco in Brazil. When Lamia applied for permits to fly this flight, they were denied the permit, as usually charter flights are operated by an airline from either the departure or the arrival country. And since Lamia was delivered, the Brazilian authorities did not allow the plane to fly. So the team flew from Sao Paulo to Viru Viru on a commercial flight, and then they boarded flight 2933. As the passengers boarded the plane, the captain was busy in the cockpit requesting fuel for the flight. The captain wanted to fill the plane up with 9,300 kilos or 18,000 pounds of fuel. The captain had plans of refueling the plane at Kobija Airport near the border between Bolivia and Brazil. At 10.08 p.m. local time, the captain powered up the plane and they headed towards the runway. After taking off from runway 34, flight 2933 climbed to an altitude of 30,000 feet their cruising altitude. As the plane was in cruise, the crew noticed that something was wrong with the plane, the fuel system to be specific. It looked like they would not have enough fuel to get the plane all the way to Rio Negro. In the cockpit, the pilots were going through all the calculations and contingencies to try and understand how much fuel that they had on board and how far they could get with that fuel. They toyed around with the idea of diverting to Bogota to refuel. But the situation on the plane looked stable enough that the captain decided to continue flying on his original plan towards Rio Negro. En route, the low fuel warning came on, but the plane just kept flying. They were just 80 nautical miles from Rio Negro and the pilots started descending from their cruising altitude. As they descended, the pilots kept a close watch on the fuel state of their airplane. By the time they were at 25,000 feet, the plane was handed over to Medellin Approach. As they got closer to the airport, another plane that had a suspected fuel leak was given priority over other planes. Thus, flight 2933 had been put into a holding pattern over the waypoint Gemli. Now, this wasn't ideal for the pilots of flight 2933. They were in a low fuel state, and now they had to stay in the circuit, burning critical fuel. Considering that the circuit was 24 nautical miles long, Even one circuit in the holding pattern would significantly eat into the little fuel reserves that they had. The pilots did not like what they were seeing. The little amount of fuel that they had would not be able to keep them in the air for much longer. The pilots were getting a bit cagey. They kept asking permission to descend over and over to the point where the controller had to be like, stand by, I've got a plane below you. You can get down once they're out of the way. Then finally... An eternity after the low fuel warning light came on, the pilots finally let the air traffic controllers know that they had a situation on board. Here's a quote. We are with fuel emergency. That's why I am asking you at once for final course, request immediate descent Lamia 2933. They knew that they had to get down as fast as possible. ATC immediately started canceling the clearances of other planes in the area and started clearing a path for flight 2933 to come in. At this point, flight 2933 was finishing up the circuit. They now just had to get on the localizer and land. As ATC was clearing other planes out of the way, the controller turned to the pilots and basically said, you're at 210 right now. Stay there for a bit and then turn to the right and start your descent. But that wasn't good enough for the crew of flight 2933. They said, negative, we are already starting our descent. The crew of flight 2933 were not wasting any time in getting their plane down. But now, it was just a mad dash to the runway before they ran out of fuel. The pilots put out the flaps and the plane started its descent down to the runway. Barely 10 seconds after the flaps had come out, engine number 3 started to lose power. Engine number 3 was closely followed by engine number 4. All this while ATC was frantically trying to get other planes out of the way of Lamia Flight 2933. With engines 3 and 4 on the verge of failure due to fuel starvation, The master warning light came on in the cockpit. Then seconds after that, power on engine number one fell from 40% to 29%. It too was starting to give out. And seconds after that, engine number two was starting to lose power and it flamed out. After that, one by one, 
each of the engines flamed out. Flight 2933 was now a glider and it was on its way down. Their only hope was gliding towards the runway. Without fuel, the power in the cockpit went out and they were trying their best to figure out where they were with respect to the airport. But they just did not have the altitude to do that. The plane crashed short of the airport. Of the 77 people on board, only six people survived the crash. And the crash had destroyed the entire Chabacoense football team. The reasons for this crash gets absolutely wild. The first hint of that was the fact that the plane in question was devoid of fuel. You see, planes carry a little bit of fuel than what is actually required to fly the route. This is so that pilots can hold and divert if necessary. The fact that this plane had absolutely no fuel on board meant that the plane in question had A, a leak on board, or B, took off with way less fuel than what was needed to fly the route. Looking at the refueling chart at the plane's origin, they found out that it was option number two that was correct. The pilot had fueled the plane with just enough fuel to reach his destination. He had not added fuel for a potential diversion, he had not added reserve fuel, and he had not added contingency fuel. This was very, very illegal. Flying like this is like playing Russian roulette with the lives of your passengers. Not only that, the investigators discovered that the pilot actively ignored warnings when the plane told him that they were critically low on fuel. When the low fuel warning came on in the RJ-85, it meant that the plane had enough fuel for either 28 minutes of flight at cruise or one approach and a go around and then a landing. In this case, when the fuel warning came on, the captain kept flying the plane like nothing was wrong. Instead of hightailing it to the nearest airport, he did the opposite. On top of all of that, the pilots never declared a mayday. Had the pilots declared a mayday, the controller would have let the pilots fly straight in. They would have been able to land with the amount of fuel that they had. But what happened? They planned on refueling the plane halfway through the flight. Well, as it turned out, as the jet approached the border, the pilots got a few transmissions from ATC, allowing them to take a few shortcuts, shaving a few minutes off of their flight time. They thought that they'd get a few more shortcuts, allowing them to land sooner than expected. On top of that, it was not as if they could have landed there even if they wanted to, as the airport had already shut down for the night as the plane had departed late and the company had not let the airport know about Flight 2933 so that they could stay open past their regular operating hours. Now the question is, why would a pilot do this in the first place? Why would someone needlessly risk the lives of a bunch of people? The shocking thing is that this wasn't the first time that this had been done by the captain. He had gotten away with this on other flights as well. You see, on a previous flight from Kobija to Barranquilla, the plane had landed with 1,000 kilos or 2,000 pounds of fuel. This was well below the minimum that the plane should have landed with. The fact that this had been done before without much in the way of consequences is probably why the pilots decided to try such a dangerous stunt in the first place. In addition to all of this, digging into the finances of the company, they found out that the company that operated this flight was in dire straits financially. This meant that they really didn't have the money to operate these flights the right way. This is why they were trying to save money with fuel. Digging further into the company just brought up more and more problems. They found out that the procedures that the airline used doesn't really maximize safety, but profits. Then adding on to that, the training given to the pilots were of substandard quality. The report specifically says that the pilots lacked self-control. That is something you definitely do not want to hear about the pilots that are flying you. The problem didn't really stop with the pilots either. The management at this airline had this mentality of mission over everything else. Here's a quote from the report. Those who made the decisions, management, and leadership were always focused on fulfilling the mission to ignore risk management and its implication within civil aviation. End quote. This was just a situation that was truly incomprehensible in multiple ways. The crew had multiple chances to save their plane. This crash did not have to end in tragedy. They could have landed at another airport to refuel. In fact, they did discuss about that very thing while they were en route. They could have diverted when they got the fuel warning. They could have told ATC that they were in trouble. Doing any one of those things would have saved the plane. But these pilots were too busy trying to cover up the fact that they had taken off with way less fuel than they needed. 
This covering up mentality is perfectly exemplified in the fact that the cockpit voice recorder stopped working well before the plane ran out of fuel. Many people believe that this was the captain in the cockpit pulling a circuit breaker to hide their conversation from any potential investigation. Do you think that the pilots disabled the cockpit voice recorder on purpose though? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But despite all of this, there was one final chance for someone to catch on to what was happening. You see, when the operator of the flight submitted the flight plan, the time and route was very close to the endurance of the airplane. Apparently, someone noted that, but didn't think too much of it. I mean, they probably thought to themselves, who would be crazy enough to fly the plane so close to its endurance limit? But had they done something about that, then this might not have ended in a crash that day. After the crash of Flight 2933, the New York Times ran a story about the plane crash. And that piece told everyone why the plane was delayed in the first place, thus delaying their arrival into the refueling airport before it closed. The reason for that delay? One of the players had forgotten their video game in their luggage and wanted to retrieve it before takeoff. That's just so sad. If you want to watch another video like this, then my video on Atlas Jet Flight 4203 is a perfect fit. Before you go, let me know what you think about this crash in the comments below. Do you think such a crash is possible in today's environment? Let me know. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.